I'm starting with the assumption that there is no dis dispute on the value of agricultural innovations and investment in agricultural innovation is, and I think many of us could reflect on the story of averting the looming Malthusian type mass starvation that has happened as a result of the innovation revolution in agriculture and the consistent analysis of uh, returns to investment in agriculture research, which ranges uh, all the way from 30% and above. Uh, so I would argue agriculture investment in innovation in agricultural systems has already a proven record of building resilience in many different ways. Of course, I will not go through those different ways. Uh, but these innovations also include biophysical innovations, varieties, management practices, and also include policy, socioeconomic uh, aspects, collective action mechanisms, mar uh, market uh, uh, access to market options, and so forth. But the adoption of these innovations is, uh, is not even. And we can, for example, look, uh, 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 we can give an attention to what's happening in the dry areas where uh, these areas face the greatest degree of vulnerability for many, many reasons. You, could, you, could list, you can list some of those Bobakar already listed, low public investment, poor infrastructure, sparse population, poor access to, to services, education, health, veterinary services, and so on and so forth. I mean, you can actually continue with that list. So I would say for the first uh, uh, submission I have is we need to really increase the investment in agricultural systems innovation is to develop relevant technologies, even today, but also to test and adapt new ways of disseminating innovation. So it's not just delivering the, the innovations because we have a great deal of them, but also investing in new methods and ways and effective ways of disseminating these innovations. There are many questions raised in actually in this, uh, in this conference about the untapped potential of integrated approaches in agriculture and ecosystems R&D, and the gap in research on agronomic and ecological options that could strengthen the resilience of agricultural systems. This requires a shift in research paradigm in favor of systems-oriented research, both in biophysical as well as in the socioeconomic fields, and the strong interaction of these aspects. In a recently published paper by a group of CHR scientists, two types of innovations were identified for further investment, particularly in the dry areas. These are innovations that promote sustainable intensification of production systems in relatively high potential areas. These innovations become more important as sustainability of more intensive production systems becomes a challenge. The second category of innovation is are those that enhance resilience in terms of reducing vulnerability to environmental shocks. These innovations include, again, in both biophysical and socioeconomic aspects, as well as markets and policies. The second submission I have is we need to promote and accelerate the adoption of modern agricultural technologies in, of course, in the whole of agricultural system, but particularly in the dry land agricultural systems, which have this specific constraints. We know that strides have already been made in supporting the adoption of modern farm technologies, and but more is needed to expand the benefits of modern technologies to a larger number of farmers in the shortest time frame, <coughs> and promote the adoption of second and third generation technologies that address the new challenges of food security and, and, and resilience. We know now modern communication tools are being used by NGOs and public research and extension organizations to speed up technology transfer. These programs should be further strengthened with more public support and commitment. The agricultural extension of the 21st century farmers should be very different from the one of the Green Revolution. The new extension service should be locally governed by provincial and state governments, but technically, and financially, at least partly, supported by the national governments to allow access to modern concepts and initiatives. 
modern, uh, modern extension should also embrace advanced methods of communication directly respond, responding to the local uh, relevant needs of smallholder farmers and livestock keepers rather than pursuing single commodity extension approach. Farmers need information on all kinds of issues. For example, they need advice on how to run business and not just how to use one single input for one single commodity. I believe more nimble and modern extension systems would be a highly profitable public investment. The third submission is um, to actually come up with innovations, invest innovations that can revert, revitalize livestock sector, particularly export opportunities in the, uh, in the countries which have a larger dry land system, particularly, for example, in the Horn of Africa countries. There are many issues which we can discuss during the question and answer and, and part of the session. And the fourth submission I have is we need to invest to take advantage of the information revolution. We are in an exciting era of tremendous advancements in the information systems where the capacity of computing coupled with the advanced systems of acquiring information on climate, state of the, res of the resources, and land use is more accessible than ever. Today, many smallholder farmers and pastoralists have access to mobile phones that can be used as a medium of communication or advanced scenario analysis and early warning systems of weather conditions where they can take tactical <coughs> decisions to adapt to anticipated climate shocks. Such systems must be built at the national and regional levels and must be learning and dynamic processes over time to improve climate information delivery services and improve resilience. Such investments can reduce loss of property, production, livelihoods, and reduce the cost of emergency aid by allowing all stakeholders to be better prepared. Finally, <coughs> innovating and investing in agricultural systems has already given us large dividends and I can give us and can give us even more in areas where the progress has been slow, where additional investment should be placed. But investments in agricultural systems innovations can also give us high returns in addressing the new challenges that are emerging from climate change. 